Welcome to our Catechism Revo, where we are continuing our look into the person of Jesus Christ. We're in question 22 today. How did Christ, being the Son of God, become man? Christ, the Son of God, became man by taking to himself a true body and a reasonable soul, being conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mary and born of her, yet without sin. Such a difficult question. How did Jesus become a man? How did divinity assume humanity? And this is a question that the church wrestled with for the first many centuries of her start. And it's an important question. And we have to deal with it. And there's a lot of theorizing we can do, but what's most important when we deal with this question is looking to Scripture, seeing what Scripture teaches us about this matter, and going no further. So Scripture reveals enough about what we need to know about how Jesus became man and maintained both uh, status as fully God, yet also fully man. And so we're understanding uh, what it means to be human. And here in the Catechism question, it says that Jesus became man by taking to himself a true body and a reasonable soul. That's what a man is. A man is a true body, a physical body, but also a reasonable soul, a thinking soul. Uh, some might refer to this also as the spirit. And so there's the physical body and there's also that spirit that we have. So humans are body plus soul or Spirit. And what the Bible teaches us is that when Jesus, who eternally was spirit with the Father, with the Holy Spirit, he became human and he took upon himself a true body and a reasonable soul. What this means is that Jesus didn't just come in and assume a body, and yet the soul or the spirit nature was Jesus. No, Jesus, who is fully God, actually assumed the body and the soul of a human being. And this is so important because remember, we are holding to the fullness of each nature without any mixing or compromise. Fully God, fully man. And so as the church in her first years where uh, theologians and Christians were dealing with this matter, uh, some in the church began to think like this. Well, maybe... Uh, Maybe it was just the spirit element that the divinity occupied. And so, you know, here's here's Jesus, the, the man. He was born. And then when he was baptized, the, the divine part kind of came in and, and, and took to control. So it was uh, it was a human body, but it was a divine pilot kind of uh, controlling the body. And we know that's wrong because... A full human has a body and soul, but in this case, that the soul would be the only divine part. So we can strike that out. Uh, still others would say that maybe the divine came uh, and kind of swallowed up the humanity. And so uh, this what was special about Jesus was that, yeah, he was a human, but his human nature was kind of swallowed up in this divinity so that uh, he was more divine than human. But again, we're now minimizing the humanity of Jesus Christ uh, in favor of the uh, deity of Jesus Christ. And still others would say, well, you know, he only appeared human. Uh, he was fully divine, fully spirit, but he was like a specter, kind of like a ghost almost. And so, you know, he's walking around, people are thinking he's a human, but really he's not. He's, he's fully divine. And of course, if we take that view, then we're fully throwing the humanity of Jesus Christ out the window. So we can't accept that view. What we hold to, as scripture teaches, is that Jesus Christ became a true body. He had a reasonable soul as a human, but he was still fully God. And so just like I did in our last catechism, I'm going to take both my markers and I'm going to fill in that person because Jesus is fully both man and God. This is what is taught in the Incarnation, uh, and our Catechism talks about this. He was conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary, but he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he didn't have an earthly dad. He wasn't uh, conceived by ordinary biological means, 
conceived in the power of the Holy Spirit. So that, that was God. That was the, the fully divine nature. Uh, and then he was conceived in the womb of a human, a virgin, which is significant, uh, but, but a human nonetheless. And so that, that baby that was born was fully human. And the question is, why is this so important? Why is it so important that we hold to what the scripture reveals as Jesus being fully God and fully man and not compromising either or? There's a lot of reasons it's significant, but all I want to talk about today is just the, the closing line of the catechism answer, which says, um, Jesus was born of her being the Virgin Mary, yet without sin. Yet without sin. There it is. Jesus Christ is our mediator. He came to be the savior of all mankind. And so it's important that he be born and not have any sin. And this is why he was born of the Virgin Mary. Now, the Roman Catholic Church emphasizes the virginity of Mary, uh, the mother of God. We Protestants emphasize that Jesus was born of a virgin. And the reason is because if you remember back what we learned about Adam, how uh, because he broke the covenant, sin was propagated to all mankind because of Adam's first sin. And so by biological means, everyone born of Adam is in sin. Well, somebody had to come and break that biological curse of sin. And so it was Jesus Christ who was born of the Virgin Mary that because he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and not an earthly father. And of course, from there, for the rest of his ongoing life, uh, he was able to be tempted, tempted to the uttermost, yet he never sinned. And that is so important because the mediator would have to be one who was sinless. So this is why it's so important that we maintain Jesus' full divinity and full humanity. His full divinity, because as the mediator of all, his finished work, the work that Adam was not able to accomplish in perfectly obeying God's law, that perfect work would be accomplished. And then fully God would be able to offer himself as a sacrifice, a sin sacrifice, not only for himself, but for all who trust in him, all whom the Father gave to Jesus Christ. And then also we maintain that Jesus was fully man. Why? Because the covenant was made with man. It was made with man through the headship of Adam. And so it had to be fulfilled by another man, the second Adam, Jesus Christ. Friends, this is no small discussion. This is the God that we worship. This is the amazing, miraculous nature of the faith we profess in this man, Jesus Christ, who was fully God. And if he was not fully God, then he was an absolute lunatic because he walked around not just teaching good morals and doing good deeds, but claiming that he was the Son of God. It's so significant and central to our faith that we maintain these positions, uh, that there was a virgin birth, that there was a sinless life, that there was an atonement that is effective for all who trust in Jesus Christ. And practically, this matters too. And that's your reflection for this week. Why does it practically matter to you that Jesus is fully God? The one in whose name you pray, the one in whom you rest, the one who's, who you worship, that he's fully God, but also that he's fully man, that God assumed our nature, our experience uh, to walk with us, to, to feel what we feel, to, to uh, know our experience so that uh, we can know that our priest is with us.